Okay, so I got cut off again. Uh, I was talking about melting. And the last thing I was saying was that the freezing point and the melting point are at the same temperature. And that's when liquid and, liquid and solid are e in equilibrium. And those are in those flat areas of your um, heating and cooling curves that you just did in your lab. So the conversion from liquid to solid and in the reverse. So we have a solid and a liquid. Liquid to a solid is freezing and that is loss in heat. Solid to liquid is melting, and that is a gain in heat. Sublimation. You define this um, using your textbook, and it was a question that was in your um, lab yesterday. It occurs in solids with vapor pressures that exceed atmospheric pressure at or near room temperature, and all it is is a direct change from solid to vapor. And you can see here in this image what's happening is purple solid iodine is... Um, converting to a um, gas uh, right at room temperature. So if you watch the experiment here, let's get this to full screen. There's an ad that hopefully we can skip. And what you are seeing is the sublimation of iodine. And all that's happening is solid iodine is in there. It's just heated a little bit and it goes directly into the gas form. You can see it's just this gas that is filling that flask up. Okay, let's go back to the PowerPoint. And gas to solid. <clears throat> When a solid goes directly to a, or excuse me, when a gas goes to a solid, we didn't mention that, that's the opposite of sublimation, that's called deposition, and that is a loss in heat. When a solid goes directly to a gas, that is sublimation, and that is a gain in heat. So we've summarized all of the changes, and the last thing that I want to do is explain to you what a phase diagram is. And so a phase diagram, all it is is a graph similar to the heating and cooling curves that shows the relationships between solid, liquid, and vapor states or phases in a sealed container. So it, there are lines on the graph, and the lines on the graph are when there are two phases that are present in equilibrium. And I'll show you this graph in a moment. Um, but it is the conditions of pressure and temperature when two phases actually are in equilibrium. The triple point is the only set of conditions in which all three phases are present in equilibrium. And so here's what you have on your notes sheet. It is the phase diagram of water, which we're obviously very familiar with. And the first thing you should fill in is that here on the left you have your solid, middle is liquid, and on the right is vapor. Okay, so now you can see here that it's color-coded, so you can tell the difference, difference between the three phases. And then I want you to notice that down here is temperature in degrees Celsius, and along the y-axis is pressure in kPa. And so what these lines are telling us is that we know that um, the normal melting point for um, water is zero degrees Celsius, at 101.3 kPa, that is standard pressure and temperature. For the normal boiling point, we know that it is 100 degrees Celsius at 101.3 kPa. And then for water, the triple point is at 0 0.016 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 0 0.61 KPA. So you have to have very, very unique conditions in order for all three of those phases to be present at the same time. Now, questions. At the triple point of water, what are the values of temperature and pressure? Repeat, they're right here. 0 0.016 degrees Celsius, 0 0.61 KPA. What states of matter are present at the triple point? Well, since we have the um, intersection of all three, then the answer is yes, all three, solid, liquid, and vapor. And then finally, assuming standard pressure, at what temperature is there an equilibrium between water and vapor? Um, and 